On September 21st, 1955, a storm was brewing in the Atlantic Ocean. Oblivious to this, Barbadians went about their business as usual. That night, people gathered around a few homes that had radios on the island to listen to the live broadcasting of a boxing match between Rocky Marciano and Archie Moore for the heavyweight boxing title of the world. Rocky's still chasing him. The bull in the Toreador and the bull keeps coming. Ten seconds. Right hand. Right hand. Right hand. Five. Six. The night before, they had um, Rocky Feller was playing, I think, uh, more. And uh, it lasted nine rounds and it ended in a knockout. See, so I heard that. In those days, we, we did not have, um, well, television or whatever. We had what they called the Barbados Rediffusion. Eventually, the excitement disappeared and people went to sleep. Little did they know that the most powerful hurricane of the 1955 season was on their doorsteps, a hurricane by the name of Janet. I forgot to turn off the radio. The radio was on and I heard the, I heard the uh, music. And I got up and listened to the music and then I heard um, Colonel Oliver, who was the general manager of Rediffusion, who I never heard talking in a day yet. He was there at night playing some soft music and saying, we are expecting a hurricane. This message didn't reach everyone in time, and with a ferocious Category 3 hurricane just a few hours away, people had little time to prepare. Hurricane Janet slammed into the island on the morning of September 22, 1955, with winds of 120 miles per hour. The roof of the house blowed off. People got killed, some in the church, some, you know, running for shelter. The galvanized was flying, and also the wind behaved real good. So it take down houses and it take down kin, it take down everything that it, that 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 was in that way. It took down everything that was in that way. And it blow house stop, blow me mother house stop right down the gully. Then it put me mother house up in the gully. Infrastructure, telephone poles and those kind of things were, were blown down. It was, it was awful, especially in Alkins, Thomas Gap, Paris Gap. But a lot of people in Boston better than me to get the house and blow it up. But the most of the damage was done in Christchurch. 38 people were killed. Over 20,000 people were left homeless and there was millions of dollars in damage. Government was forced to declare a state of emergency. The thing, if we move on, that really precipitated this damage as well is the lack of warning. And this was a common thing up until you could almost say the 19, late 1960s. Janet was the first hurricane to hit Barbados in almost 60 years. Nothing, not even experience, could have prepared her survivors for such vast devastation. The other significance that we want to, to, to zero in on is that most of these hurricanes were occurring over a 60-year, roughly a 60-year interval. Okay? So we have 1898 hurricane, then Hurricane Janet, 1955. So that tells us that we may be due for another major hurricane um, quite soon. Houses were blown down. So people had to live in the schools. 
The schools we visited here were boxing, St. Matthias Boys and Girls, Greasel Girls, Edgar Girls, Montgomery, St. Stephen's Boys and Girls, and St. John's Boys and Girls. Now, the strange thing about Edda, four of those schools no longer existed. Montgomery Boys and Edgar Girls, they're closed. They were amalgamated, and they're now the new Eden Lord School. But they closed the Greasel Girls School and the Boxton, Boxton Boys School. So we went out to these schools, uh, when you visit the schools, families inside there, their beds and the utensils and all, 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 all types of things. Yeah. But my, the biggest one for me was when I went to one of St. Harris, St. Harris boys. We thought that's where I grew up in St. Harris. So there were people inside there, I used to go into the home and eat with the, eat with them running out. So that really hit me, to see my own, my own people there. Every morning, I didn't believe anymore of visiting the school. And we also carried a, uh, there was a, 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 like a handyman. He would wash them, he would wash them, he wash them anything that needed washing them. But in those days, we didn't, there was nothing called Clorox, nor bleach. There was something called EC. I used to use EC. So we, we carried bread, biscuits, salmon, corned beef, coffee, rice, cocoa, matches, kerosene oil, etc. And all this was done by the uh, government. So every day, we made it fit pretty for the school. They were kept clean. That's one thing, they were kept clean. And it was a marvel to see so many families. I mean, there isn't any, there isn't any separation. You, you are here, your bed is here, your dog is here, your cat is there, somebody's here, the same thing. You know, well, of course, you would get a few uh, disputes from time to time, but generally speaking, they're outside, they're outside, they're outside, they play and, and they live, 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 live uh, kind of peaceably during the, during the session. But it was tough. And some of the persons remained in school for, for, for weeks. Ten, five, nineteen was longer. Ten weeks. So you know what happened in the same school for ten weeks. There was no school. No school, school children like that. School children like that. No school for ten weeks. They're like that. During this time, the rebuilding process began. It breaks down and it makes them. I work with some people, especially Motley, and I had the in Maxwell, in fact, around town. And I get, you know, I get big proper. I would do what I call a child's hand. I go from job to job to plan with the spirit level to see if the houses would go. But when I put back up my mother's house, a gentleman named Mr. Bannister, he was a former with a uh, housing authority. He come for me. But I was the only one, the only man for the job that had a spirit level at the time. So Mr. Motley, E.D. Motley, he had a load of lot of houses in all kinds, Thomas Gap and Paris Gap. And he tell Mr. Wilson, let me work one of these houses for him. And I did. He, he made sure that I had lunch every day. But I can down it with a rough. Don't forget. I told you the number of houses that were built. That were built. There was a sort of, uh, of carpenters. And so it took a long time to build back the house, build back the, build back the housing stock. In fact, things were so bad that there were some men who weren't even carpenters by trade. But they just took up a hammer. As long as you had a hammer, they, they conclude that you were a carpenter. And you go and work and get the same money as my carpenter. Well, the, the roof of the house blowed off. And to get food or anything, we had to go to the, it was the arms house at the time. Right? You know where the district hospital was? And you go there and you would get, um, they give, there was sardines and corned beef and, you know, things like that. I would go and get I said, well, they say, well, so much for family, right? Okay. But I was go and get mine and go back, and then go to the end of the line again. 
and work my way up because there was a lot of us to feed. Over in St. Philip, a detailed list of those affected by Hurricane Janet was prepared. Colin Field remembers his dad, a church warden and manager at Vineyard Plantation, supervised the distribution of relief supplies in that parish. After that had happened, the government sent up trucks from the warehouses in Bridgetown to Edgecombe Plantation. You stood on your house spot and you were given a voucher. So then the trucks with the foodstuffs came around to, to your village. And each truck was guarded by a member of the Barbess Regiment in those days. And your, um, your voucher was delivered to the truck and you were in return given the appropriate amount of rice corned beef, biscuits, and so on. While most neighborhoods in Barbados were badly affected by Hurricane Janet, Fontabel, an upper middle class residential district at the time, experienced little devastation. Back then, Gregory Downey was a young carefree lad living at Holborn House, the governor's former home. I remember an incident right after the sort of giving the all clear um, somebody came and said, look, some fellas stealing stuff from the farm. Well, it was, we had a lot of coconut trees and fruit trees in, a, in an orchard area to the Fontabelle side. And there was a fairly high wall that kind of enclosed the whole property along the Fontabelle Road down to almost to the Westbury, <laughs> Westbury Road side, almost down there. I uh, had these couple of fellas there. Well, we had had family from Trinidad here at the same time. And I remember somebody says, get the shotgun, get the shotgun. <laughs> I'm going to scare these guys away. And I remember, God, they were stealing coconuts and fruit. God knows what else I don't know where they were picking up. And there go these two shots. <laughs> well, I can tell you, I had never seen a fellow scale a wall so fast without touching it. <laughs> I mean, he literally took off. But then the aftermath, that's where the fun really came for us children. Of course, we had a number of people staying at home at the time. <clears throat> and it was, where are you going to put them? <laughs> so the place then, we had had two sets of sitting rooms or drawing rooms and two sets of furniture and everything. So it was just taking all the cushions off, <laughs> off the chairs and putting them on the ground. And everybody, and that's where they were relaxing or had to sleep for a couple of nights until they went back home. And we children, know it was fun for us. I didn't want to go and sleep in my bed. I didn't want to go and sleep downstairs I mean, with, with this crowd. And of course, the corned beef and biscuits <laughs> in abundance. <laughs> God, that was what Mrs. Hill basically was sharing around the place. And coming out of that as well, there was a Coney Island that was here in Barbados at the time. And I think they were located where the Bridgetown Fish Market is now. And they had suffered some damage. And of course, they had nowhere to put the equipment after the storm. And in those days, it, it, they didn't have the electric dodging cars that you see in Coney Islands. No, they, they had the actual, what we call them the bumper cars that were actually gas-driven motors. <laughs> and then the other set of fun now after the storm, a couple of days after when the cleanup had started, they had to find somewhere to put these things. And Holborn was the only place that had the room. And of course, everybody was getting to drive in these things after because it, it, the space was so big. You know, we weren't worried about cleanup after hurricane and everything. You were getting into little dodge up cars <laughs> and driving them all over the place. So that was the fun aspect of it. But we, we were not aware I, I would say down in Fondabel, we didn't seem to have had the devastating effect of Janet as other places in Barbados had. Meanwhile, a public health challenge emerged as one Barbadian after the other fell to sickness. There wasn't any running water. And if you wanted to, if you want to uh, answer nature's call, it was this outhouse, but that was made of wood. So when Janet came, not only houses went, 
but also the old houses, man. So when the old houses were they left waste exposed, exposed. And a number of people, because normally your house is stronger than in the toilet. The toilet is just a little structure. So, so there were a lot of, lot of that. And the flies had a hair there. And we had a, I would call it a typhoid epidemic, falling, uh, falling genetic. Typhoid fever, gastroenteritis, diarrhea, pneumonia, and severe asthmatic attacks. You know, the asthma will be the dust and all of those things. So each one came from a different part of whatever went on. The typhoid, you know, would be the feces, the dirt, and everything that mixed. It would be typhoid fever, the gastroenteritis. It would be what you ate, and you weren't sure if it was clean or not, because you know how it is. You'll be eating things from a grocery and still not sure what really went on. Diarrhea, pneumonia. Those that were out in the rain and the cold for the night, the whole night after the day, because all weren't found the same day, going to where the wind blew them. So those were the pneumonia ones. I visited a home. And one of the ladies had typhoid fever. Within the next few, the next few weeks, I, I was down with typhoid fever. And I was in Kuwait for about, let me see, I think I spent 24 days. But out of those 24 days, I was gone for about 20. I could only remember things about four days. Things were so bad that another person came and shared the bed with me. I tell you five people too. What they did, they took, took a sheet in between two of us. So my head was up there. And he said, he said, the same bed. So it was an epic. Then I died by saying it was a tie five epic. Man. So uh, people, people, are only, people are only aware of what Janet did with the, uh, with the houses and whatnot. But the after effect of Janet, we lost a number, a number of people died with tie, tie five people. So I owe my life to the nurses of that day. I owe my life to the nurses. We had very few nurses, but there were nurses. There were nurses. I don't know if you understand what I mean. <laughs> I think they handled it very well. Now, when I compare it with now, where we have come from, they handled it well. Hurricane Janet's damage also affected businesses, especially for fishermen. Because the hurricane struck on the south coast, those fishermen from St. Philip on that stretch of coast down to Bridgetown were hard as it. Okay? And they didn't have enough time to haul up their boats. And the government made loans available so that fishermen could re place their vessels because the fishing industry was very important to the government, very important source of income for fishermen. The Laria family lost their father, a fisherman, at sea. But some good did come from Hurricane Janet for them. But my dad, he said that um, he had to take the boat from Oystens to the harbor in town for safety. So he and his friend Barton, right, take the boat. And he never came back. But the harbor police at the time, we were told that they saw the boat, you know, in the whirlpool, right? But they couldn't get to it. They couldn't save anyone, so it went down. Because our father body was not recovered along with the other fisherman uh, Barton whose body was not recovered the government put a program in place after the children complete uh, primary school they would be assisted with an apprenticeship scheme when they reached 21 years which at the time was the 
you become a man or a woman at 21. And, and, and that, that served us very, very well. My sister Perlin was given the assistant by a, a private individual. Because there was nine of us, right? I being the oldest, Salvin being the youngest, he was five. And any Wilson, he said he would send the oldest one to England to work and help, you know, support the siblings. So he said, I'm the oldest. So I said, okay, but you're yet young. I said, I can do it. I've been looking after them, you know, from the time they're born, right? So I can look after them. He said, but you have to work and, you know, send back and help. I said, yes, I can do that. A month later, I was on my way to England. So we all benefit tremendously from that and, and we pledged, well I pledged, when I came into my consciousness, I pledged that the family must give back to Barbados some of what we have benefited and also to give Barbadians or the Caribbean people a sense of hope should there be a disaster. Hurricane Janet left Barbados as a Category 4 system and then strengthened to become a Category 5 storm. Grenada too would have also had some impacts from, from Jeanette. Grenada, St. Vincent, and as I said, maybe as far as St. Lucia. It remained on a westward track, strengthening all the while. And that track took the system across the Caribbean Sea. It would have been intensified to category four, but then it would have fluctuated again in intensity and it was again back up to Category 5. By the time it moved across the Yucatan, it crossed over the Yucatan into the Gulf of Mexico, and it again made landfall in Mexico, Veracruz, Mexico. And that was around the 30th of September or so. Eventually dissipating as it moved further in. 60 years and counting, Barbados is yet to be hit by another hurricane. But the island has had many close calls with Mother Nature's fury. Have Barbadians learned anything from the perils of Hurricane Janet? I hope they had. I hope they had because every hurricane blow about here now, the housing stock is very poor. All these things are houses. Man, we take advantage of them. Mash them up. And they got quite a few of them. But in that day, they had four hip houses, a few. What people call now, they buggle the shit. And they could withstand any weather. Yeah, but they flat that house. My men make havoc with them now. I don't, I don't think much learned from Janet, because they're all still, more or less, still the same. Barbers need a proper building code, not this flat top. Flat top is all right for summer, but if it got a hurricane, but we ain't gonna cry. We are more aware. So, in fact, not, not only that, too, I think, we, we can't afford it. Back then, even after I told you, I'm not going to buy a star strike. How you going to buy a star strike? You got six or seven hungry children there. We were at a different stage then. We only had refusion, and a lot of houses didn't have. So even if things were being, warnings and so were being given to them, stay in your homes, don't do this, don't do that, some of them didn't know because they didn't have refusion. They might hear from a friend or a neighbor. Now everybody has everything, or at least the majority. Hurricane Janet became one of the most powerful and deadliest hurricanes for the 1955 season. In fact, so deadly was Janet that on September 26, 1955, 
a Hurricane Hunter plane on a reconnaissance mission was lost and officially reported missing. The name Janet was retired from the Atlantic list of tropical cyclones. And so, some 60 years later, we have memories of a hurricane that has left searing images in the minds of its survivors. Janet has taught us that each day is a gift. We should never take anything for granted. And as a small island, we remain vulnerable to disasters. Stay home. Stay in whatever building you're in. If the building is not strong, you should, should be told and advised to go somewhere else. The main thing in a hurricane is to obey. Obey what you are told, where safety, your safety is concerned. If you know the hurricane is coming, stock up food and everything that you know you will need. The, the landline is not going to be working, your cells might work, top up your cells. Be, be prepared. That is the main thing. Be prepared. Just don't say hurricane what. A lot of people do that. Hurricane what? The day going to pass and the hurricane ain't going to come. No. If you have bought things that you should feel you need not have bought, they will come in useful. You can use them after. When you're sure there are no more hurricanes passing our way. But it's because people don't, they don't listen, they don't obey. That is the, that is the problem. Man is not in control of this world. And you can get a hurricane that is so powerful that it could upset your best precaution that you can make, too powerful. The best thing you can do to pray to God. <laughs> We welcome your feedback on our programs. You may email your comments to bgisfeedback at barbados.gov.bb. You may also view our website at www.gisbarbados.gov.bb or subscribe to our YouTube channel, the BGIS.